Welcome to Carne E. My name is Mizan and today I've got this Audi for you. It's not an S3, it's not an RS3. It's something more special than an A3 as well. It's an Audi A3 3.2 Quattro. This car has got a 3.2 litre VR6. You might be thinking, what the hell is a VR6? Well, technically speaking, the engine in this is not exactly a V, but at the same time, it's not an inline six. That's why it's called a VR6. The R in VR6 actually means Rye, which in German means inline. And the reason why it's got this unicorn engine is because the Audi A3 wasn't designed for a long longitudinal engine and it was only designed for transversely placed engines. And this was the only way they could fit that large engine in this small engine bay. So this car is genuinely a unicorn. It's wizardry at its finest, if you ask me. The only other car that had this same engine was the Audi TT in the Audi lineup. The Audi A4 and vice versa all had the same engine, but in those engines, they didn't have to squash it in the engine bay. So they were just normal V6s. This car has 247 brake horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. Now, as it's a naturally aspirated car, I think that's pretty good if you ask me, even by today's standards. This car in particular has got a six speed manual and it's obviously got the Haldex four wheel drive quattro system. This car can be optioned with a DSG gearbox, which is also a six speed. Prices between both are not that different in the second hand market. Personally, I think I'd rather go with the manual because I feel like it's gonna be better on fuel, it's gonna be more engaging and more reliable. The DSGs that are optioned on this car were the first DSGs made by Audi for performance cars and they're not the most reliable. So I'd rather just take the manual and avoid all that hassle. This car can be picked up from anywhere between 2K to 7K. I think that's amazing value for money because internally it's no different to an R32 Mark V. And those cars start from minimum five grand. The other thing to bear in mind is most A3s fall under the lower road tax band because this car launched in late 2003. So plenty of examples that have this engine that are before 06. Whereas the R32 debuted in late 2005. So only a handful of those cars fall in the low road tax band. If you're gonna ask me, yes, the R32 has got the name, but ultimately it's the same engine. So you could save a lot more money by running one of these, both buying wise, as well as road tax wise. Even though it's got this beautiful engine, there's nothing unique about it in terms of styling. Audi just didn't bother making it stand out at all. At least with the R32, you've got this unique body and whatnot. With the A3, unfortunately, you didn't get it. With the S3, they did it. With the RS3, they did it. So I guess on this car, Audi just learned from the mistakes. And that's the other thing, I guess, why people want to pay more for the R32. So let's talk about mods. This is not your average usual S line. And you know what? I'm very happy about that because as it was a 3.2 and Audi didn't do anything special with the car, it was such a bland looking car. You wouldn't be able to differentiate from a normal s at the time, you know? So this car has got this full ABT body kit. It's got a front bumper with the ABT extensions. You've got the extended side skirts and it's got a rear diffuser as well. It's also got the honeycomb mesh grill at the front. And at the time, again, it used to get those boring horizontal grills that I found on pretty much every A3 at the time. And it's got this RS3 looking grill, which obviously back then didn't even exist. So that looks really good. The headlights, they're not the facelift headlights, but they imitate that and they're plug and play. So nice and easy, swap out the units and they work perfectly fine. It's got a full Miltec exhaust system. It sounds very, very fruity. I'm excited to show you guys that later in the video. It's lowered on coilovers and it's got these caliber wheels. All those things were already done to the car when the owner bought it. He didn't have to do any of that. There's only one thing he's done, which is he put a chameleon tint on the window. That's it. Let's talk about spec. This car is actually very well spec if you ask me. It's got an electric sunroof, it's got full black leather interior and it's got heated seats. It's got a Bose sound system. The other mod I want to mention is the fact it's got an upgraded Android head unit, which looks very OEM plus. You wouldn't know it was upgraded and it all just sets the interior off really, really well. Let's now go for a drive and you guys will meet Saiful again. Why did the f did you sell your Honda and buy this piece of sh how, how is this, is this, this a piece of how, how, how is this Explain an upgrade? To me. It's a piece of sh man. Look at the mileage on it, man. You f oh, it's mileage been to, doesn't matter. It's been to the moon mate halfway through to the moon man and what oh shit the cameras are all that was a little joke for some people that um had some opinions about the yeah about my ep2 video <laughs> exactly oh so, yeah now we're in the 3.2 obviously we've got cypher driving welcome back to the channel man yeah it's good to be back tell me about Fresh it it hasn't been long since we last even had you on the channel and now look you're back yeah back with a bang yeah yeah, I would say I had to get Saiful back. How long you own the car again? So yeah. literally, you, you owned it at the time of the EP2 video we done. Yeah, yeah, that's that's been a month. So a I month. had this car for a month. First off the bat, I want to say this on camera. Um, the chameleon tint you've got on, I think it looks so so good. But the honest truth is, it does add this yellow tint inside the car. It's that it's like having your phone in that 
blue screen mode all the time, you know? That oh, blue, yeah, yeah. Oh, night the, mode. The blue filter, basically. Yeah, blue filter, night mode, whatever you want, yeah. iPhone or Samsung, people want to call it, but it has that filter to it. But I guess it does help with sun glare, doesn't it? So Yeah, it helps with sun glare, like it stops the sun from hitting me in the eye. Because I've been thinking about one of these uh, these chameleon tints of my car, especially the blue, it would really pop, but at the same time I've been put off because there's yellow tint, but you've had it done at Just Tints and this is pretty manageable, it's not that bad. How does Quattro feel compared to front-wheel drive? Yeah, it feels more, uh, brings more confidence. Yeah? Yeah, brings more confidence do than front-wheel drive. Do you miss fighting with the front-wheel drive of the Civic sometimes? No, I never fought the front wheels. Yeah, you no. actually did it. It wasn't no, fighting. It wasn't even that quick to fight. <laughs> exactly. The only time I fought it was in first gear. Yeah, when yeah. it just wheel spin. I said in the EP2 video, I mean, you're 22 years old and you're driving a 3.2 VR6 and you came from a 1.6 in line four, you know? Yeah, that's double the upgrade. Yeah, double the displacement, double the power, double the horsepower. More than triple, double, actually. what triple the torque? <laughs> yeah, triple, yeah, triple the torque probably. Yeah, honestly, what an upgrade. And um, look, we're driving in comfort. Well, obviously, it's, it's a manual, so there's no comfort there's mode, no but comfort. we're just driving we're comfortably driving right now. And it just drives like a normal A3, which is what you want, isn't it? And you know? if, um, the weird thing is, it's coilovers and it's very comfortable for coilovers. Yeah. Honestly, it's a very comfortable car. It's not loud, it's not drony. I mean, you've got that Miltech exhaust system, but there's no noise in the cabin either. Uh, Do you want to explain this mate? Uh, so basically I was in a car meet and with my friends we were sending it. Why How would you like it if I ripped your face off? Why is this in the back seat? You put that back on. I'm going to put it back on. In terms of mods, come on. I've been on your case. You change your wheels. Come on guys, do you not agree? He's 50-50 by it. I've told him he needs to get some black edition wheels on. Do you not agree? Comment in the section below. If I get more comments to change my wheels, I'll do it. Yeah, he needs black edition wheels or S line wheels, you know. These aftermarket wheels just don't do and it. And I, I told this guy, I've only had the car for a month. Yeah, but. Wheels are pending. Yeah, but I found you some cheap wheels though, and you're still not going for it. Because I ain't got time, bro. And the other thing as well is the last thing, you're going to do the rear LED yeah, facelift got the lights. Facelift tail lights. Yeah, because that's the one thing that's going to make this. That's the main thing that I'm going to do. Because this is that's going to make this 2005 car look like a 2011 car. And Cypher's going to fully go for it. Show me what the VR6 is. <laughs> and Cypher's gonna fully go for it, show me what the VR6 is. <laughs> he was waiting on that, he was waiting on that. That noise is proper addictive, man. Proper addictive. Oh, it's popping and banging. Okay. Mate, should I, should I call the police? It sounds like you got someone locked in your boot. This is what you do to women. You lock them up in your boot. Is that how you keep all of them, eh? <laughs> Honestly, that, what do you mean? I'm just, I'm just hearing knocks. Is that you got someone in the boot? It's like someone saying, let me out of here. We 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 oh, oh, damn it. Hey. It just grips so well, though. Honestly, like, I can feel it. All four wheels are just working together in perfect harmony. It's just popping and banging so bad. Honestly, and you know what? This is the a nice. This is a nice amount of pops up bangs. Uh, it's not over. Yeah, you know, some of them they pop your eardrums and they sound like gunshots. This is that a decent pop up bang. Their reaction. Is I'm going thirty. <laughs> My, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were waving us down as if we were speeding because of the pops and bangs, but we're literally doing 30 miles per hour. People do want me to do a pop and bang map, no. but I'm thinking twice because no. of... Um, it's not good for the engine. It's not good for the engine. It's not good for the lifespan of the engine because exactly. all the time it's going to... Another thing as well is, look, in terms of mileage, you've got, you've got 120,000 miles. Car doesn't yeah. feel like it's got that kind of mileage. I'm going to be honest with you. And I, when it comes to a high mileage car mapping it, it's not right because the engine's worn in. You shouldn't really play around with that yep. much, you know? If it was a fresh engine. Exactly. Yeah, it's, like an, it's like you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you know? Yep. And that's how it is. You can't teach this car new tricks. Just let it be, let it live its life. Hopefully it will, it will, be, it will give you longevity, you know? Now so, um, we're looking, we're gonna pull over and I'm gonna hop in the driver's seat. Yeah. All right guys, so I'm in the 3.2. Let's see if you can drive this manual. Listen, man. The, what, you struggled I, with the Civic. No, I didn't. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna make this very clear. I struggled. But only because they're biting point, yeah? German cars, I've done this. I've owned one, good to go. See, look at that. Look at that. Look at that, no problem. 
Oh my god, the gearbox is so short when it comes to one, three, and five. It's so short. The two, four, six is very long, isn't it? I feel like it's got a short shift though. And that's what I think, comfort wise. I mean, yeah, the car is lowered, but honestly, you wouldn't believe it is. Yeah, it's low, it's very low. But it's very, very comfortable. That's my manual driving then, huh? Yeah, it's decent. I told you, I'm see. not driving a van no more. But let's see how it is when you're whoa, whoa, whoa. quick shifting. When you're quick shifting. All right, cool, we'll see that. I want to own an R32 one day. I, I, I genuinely do because I just feel like it's such a unique car. I mean, ideally, I want the R32, but I can't I can't justify spending 600 pounds odd on road tax, you know? Yeah. So road tax is absolutely stupid. Stupid. Though. It's stupid. It's just a money making scheme, if you ask me. Especially because the older cars aren't affected, only the new ones. So clearly, it's money making. They're penalizing newer cars than the old ones because it's the same emissions. And like I said, I want an R32, but if I can't get a 55 plate one, which is the pre-06 uh, and falls under that band, I think I'm just gonna get a 3.2 like this. Noise. I love driving it in manual. Oh my God, the Quattro is working so well. I can feel the uh, inner wheel digging in. That's Quattro for you. It's fighting for traction. What a difference to the Civic. The Civic was the last manual car that I drove on the channel and yeah. honestly the gearbox feels nice. Do you prefer the gearbox in this or the Civic? I, pr I prefer the gearbox in this. The Civic one was nice mm -hmm. but now that I got used to this now. Do you not like car. having your elbow on an armrest and being able yeah, to shift yeah. without having to? Yeah without having, having, <laughs> having no armrest at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. Cue the elevator music. What's that elevator music? When I drove your EP2. Remember the song? Oh. And look at that. A three point turn with no problems, no like revving. Ex exactly. Don't diss my manual driving. I can drive. Listen, if you've got a manual and you want me to drive your car and you want it reviewed, go ahead. I can drive manual. There's the proof, yeah? <laughs> If you want to buy an R32 or a VR6, go buy one. Oh my god. Oh my god, you know with the windows up, you don't enjoy it as much. You have to enjoy it like this. I loved the S3 when I drove on the channel, yeah? Yeah. But the one thing it lacked from me was noise. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, why do I drive the M1 35 It's not the fastest hot hatch in the world, but I love it because of the noise. I love the straight six. For me, an inland four just doesn't do it for me. So something like this is it, perfect, isn't it? Yep. manual car because you're so in control of the car I mean yes in my car I put it in manual mode and I use the flappy paddles but this is different Sierra Oscar 1-9 shots fired I wouldn't be surprised if someone called the police on me yeah. Woo! Driving these cars make me sad because they just don't exist anymore, man, in the lineup. And the honest truth is, this was always a unicorn car to begin with, and it's gone. And and this is why I have a love-hate relationship with these S3s and Golfers. Like I, I respect them. By God, I respect them. Yeah, they're, they're so they're, capable. They're, they're, capable they're so they're far. Quick. Listen, they can leave me behind in my in my M135 without a doubt. But the reason why I give them such a hard time sometimes is because they killed stuff like this you know they killed yeah. it you know i mean they even killed my car the new m135i is a two liter and the four cylinder can't make noise like this and that's it guys that's why i give them such a hard time i mean think about it. i'm in an audi a3 
that sounds like a bloody GTR, a Nissan GTR. Yes, it might not have the same power and tuning capability as the GTR, but the noise is there. Like I say, it's rest in peace to this engine. Rest, rest in, peace. in peace to V6 and all V engines. Honestly, we're not gonna have them no more. And this is why this is why I bang on all the time, guys. Enjoy the time we have with these cars. Enjoy the time because we're not gonna get these these creatures anymore. You know. This car is criminally underrated. How many people know about the VW R32's non-identical twin? Why isn't it as highly rated as the Golf? Since when is Volkswagen more premium than Audi? That's the case with this car. And it all comes down to Audi's lack of giving it a proper badge at the back, as well as some individual styling. It's scandalous how Audi marketed this. That being said, that's the reason why they're so cheap. Not everyone knows about them, or if they do, they hold out for the R32. So if you wanted an R32 but don't want to break the bank and all you're after is primarily that beautiful engine, get one of these. Put the money you saved on getting one of these and supercharge it to battle the RS3 of the same generation for a laugh. This is an amazing project car for anyone wanting a good foundation, even from a visual aspect. Make it look like the car it should have from factory. An Audi A3 S32. I'd love to see one of these with the same bumper and twin exhaust tips as the R32s. Actually, ignore that. I shouldn't be saying out loud what my future plans are if I get my hands on one of these. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you comment, like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Now it's time for the fireworks show.